Um, like for Shoma, it is already the 27th. Like in fact, it's like, I don't know, like 10 a.m. for him yeah. in the morning. <laughs> and the 27th of February is actually a date that is very important for everyone uh, around the world who is interested in Pokemon since that is the date where the first set of Pokemon games um, were released red and green in Japan. So that's uh, Pokemon Day. And for that special occasion, um, if you want to check out like Pokemon.com, there's also a couple of stuff happening over there as, for example, a marathon of like TV movies on Twitch. But now we're here. Um, now it's still the 26th for probably most of you. And we are seeing a drive going up against Shade Vieira. And I don't believe that that is Vieira we're seeing right here. Uh, either no, way, I think I think that's somebody else. <laughs> what, what do you what do you think about those, these three? Vieira, Marcus, he won't stop. All he knows is Drift from Lele. All he will do is lead Drift from Lele, and it's working. This but guy it worked is exactly. Control. Exactly, it worked. So it looks like um, A Drive wants to to capitalize on that lead by um, going with his Feeny, um, something that also I tried to do, since that of course instantly um, will re uh, like get rid of that psychic terrain and instead setting up the misty terrain which um, also protects his his own guard jump excuse me from from being burned from that will o -Wisp that we know is on the driftland uh, but with the choice scarf on guard jump that we've seen um in yesterday's play um like leading with two choice items by the way and the tapu lele also having a choice back on on uh, vieras and so a lot of these pokemon really have to make very big decisions this first turn yeah absolutely i i totally forgot that adria's guard jump was in fact choice scarf so um, part of the reason why Shoma doesn't mind leading with his Tapu Lele is because even though he does lose the terrain, um, <laughs> he gets the Choice Specs boost. So are there three Choice Pokemon in the field? Because Adrian yeah, is exactly, Specs. Exactly. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I must have missed that. Yeah. It's Choice City, everyone. All, like, so oh, <laughs> nothing on the field can protect. There's not a yeah, single Pokemon. Exactly. So this, this is ridiculous. This first turn, but maybe that's also something that you can do, especially in such a, like, in a best of five situation. And if you're in A Drive's shoes, I, I wouldn't feel too bad about this because if you can, if you can like make the right calls and maybe get like two early knockouts here, then you can probably like outlast the trick room, uh, the, sorry, the tailwind that uh, Viera just set up here and like go for uh, for a quick win here. But we're seeing the rock side coming out, and um, it'll be countered by dazzling gleam from from Viera's choice back Lele. Garchomp is actually able to survive that in oh high Oh my god! Not a move we've seen yet, and that is enough to pick up the KO with a critical hit. However, um, since we know that it's choice specs, I'm not super sure how important that was. Um, it will allow Viera to to get a nice switch into to whatever he wants. Um, could oh. be his own Garchomp if he decided to bring that, but that was a big knockout here the first turn. Hydro Pump's such a risky move because if it's only 80% or is 85 I guess 80? 80% nice. accuracy, but it's it's such a high risk, high reward move because as you saw, that, that Tapu Fini, Tapu Fini normally a Pokemon that does not do well against Tapu Lele. Um, you know, Tapu Lele will eventually out damage it, but um, the fact that he had Hydro Pump, I'm not sure if that crit mattered. It honestly might have. I think Shoma has shown that his Tapu Lele is relatively yeah, bulky, but... It's pretty bulky. Yeah, so... Then, off a little bit of chip damage with that Rock Slide. Yes. Um, so, a tough call on Viera. By the way, um, something that maybe like some of the viewers do not really understand, like why is he taking so much time? Like he only has two Pokemon on the back, like just send something out. But see someone, um, because during that time, he already knows what he's going to send out, right? So he he's can already think about the next turn and the turns after that, where his opponent now basically only has like half the time to, to make a move selection here. And, yes. Uh, yeah, that, that means that um, now he, he probably already knows what he wants to do with his Garchomp, bringing it out here, and um, yeah, he has that Tailwind set up. Yes, and so what's I, I also I think noting how much time uh, Shoma's taking is really important because Dan doesn't know what Shoma's going to take out, so his 45 seconds here are spent trying to figure out what Shoma's going to do this turn, but Shoma's already figured out what he wants to do this turn. He's now thinking about the next turn, and then maybe he's covering options from there as well. So I think Gyarados is probably coming in here. Yeah, that is Gyarados. He's trying to preserve the longevity of... Um, this type of Fini hopefully making it take an attack here. So I'm really interested to see what happens this turn. Okay, it looks like um, Garchomp is, uh, sorry, Gyarados is the Pokemon that A-Drive wants to send out here to deal with that Garchomp that we saw being switched in here. And that makes a lot of sense since of course, um, ooh, but card by the Sword Dance right away. Um, not only like getting rid of that Intimidate, but also still is gonna connect. Stack. However, Hydro Pump uh, will target down that Drift Limb and with a Psychic Seed that we've seen, uh, that is still oh. not enough, so another knockout for that Tapu Fini. And it looks like, yeah, once again, um, A-Drive coming out with that creative choice here of going for the Choice Specs Tapu Fini with Hydro Pump, and it's paying off here. That was a huge, huge, huge KO because 
Now, uh, Shoma can't switch out to reset the Intimidate. And so all the Intimidates, except for the fact that both Gyarados and Garchomp can boost, but Marcus, imagine if he has Arcanine in the back. He's able to cycle Intimidates on two physical attackers, and I don't think that the air is going to be able to outstand him up, especially because he has to deal with this Tapu Fini at some point. So I'm really, really impressed, yeah. Ex exactly, so now, um, however, on, on Viera's end, we're seeing two Pokemon that have um, access to a boosting move here in Sword Dance and Dragon uh, Dance. So Tailwind is still up for Viera, and um, now it really comes down to what does what does Dan want to do here? Does he want to try and stall out the Tailwind by switching around and like running into the risk of Viera just say going all out with another Sword Dance and maybe even a, a, a Dragon uh, Dance as well, um, or does he want to like take the risk of just getting um, two Pokemon knocked out relatively quickly? And I think that'll be very very important here. It looks like he wants to maintain the Gyarados for later on, since of course that Intimidate ability would be really nice. Um, Ooh. A dragon dance. What is, if Fiera goes for an earthquake here? That's going to be huge. It's actually going to be enormous. Let's see what he does. Rock slide. Ooh. Ah, okay. So that's his last attack. Okay. Um, it's not enough to get the KO on Garchomp. It also won't KO the Fini, uh, but it does flinch here. A hydro pump there could have been huge. Yeah. yeah it also would have needed to connect the hydro pump, um, of which he already like hit two of them. And even with the choice packs, I don't think that should be enough to knock out that Garchomp. But of course now. Um, really strong position here for Viera, um, who can go for another boosting move and then Earthquake to potentially knock out both Pokemon here. And because so, both his Pokemon have Earthquake, he could literally he could Earthquake with with either one if he wasn't expecting exactly, it. Exactly, exactly, because yeah. we are probably expecting also a switch into Garchomp here. Um, he could also try to go for another one of those Rock Slides, um, if he if he like knows that his Garchomp can take that Hydro Pump, um, that would be another option. But um, yeah, uh, still it's definitely not over yet. Um, a Drive decides to call back his Garchomp, which we know does have the Choice Scarf, so at plus one speed, um, it should still outspeed his opponent's Gyarados. Brings yes. up Gyarados, logical choice here, going for another Intimidate, reducing the attack set of both his opponent's Pokémon. Another Dragon Dance. Yeah, good player on Vieira's end. So now that, Gar uh, that Gyarados will outspeed A Drive's Scarf Garchomp, and let's see what does Garchomp go for here. Yeah, that was, earthquake. Okay. that was a very good move, I think. I think he recognized that it didn't matter if Gyarados came in, because it couldn't immediately do that much, that much damage. Um, and so I think, Marcus, based on the way that he's playing the set, I think there's a very, very, very good chance that um, A-Drive's last mod is Muck. And if that's the I, case, yeah. yeah. If I that's don't the case, think, yeah. I don't think it's Arcanine at all, because no. um, then he could have used that before to, to get some more Intimidates off. And yeah, I also do think that it is that Muck probably, and that would put um, Viera in a pretty decent spot now, having boosted his Gyarados as well as the Garchomp, which is now back to a uh, neutral attack stick, though. Yes, and so, but if it's if it's Muck, we know that the Gyarados has Watarium Z. So if if uh, Dan is able to get rid of that Garchomp, um, mm -hmm. then at least Muck Muck has a better chance of bringing this one back, especially because he can knock off the Citrus Berry of yeah. um, of Viera as Garchomp. And the Ground DMZ is not being that helpful here, honestly. Mm -hmm. And we've we've already also seen um, that Earthquake is a thing on uh, Shoma's Gyarados. So. Yeah, that duo of Garchomp and Gyarados really, really helping it out. Also in his set against Enosh, which eventually he, he did lose. Um, but now against Adrev again, both of them actually now, in fact, with that Garchomp <laughs> and this Gyarados is not, combination. This is not what I expected to see. I did not expect to see Garchomp and Gyarados all over the place. But I mean, <laughs> they're both in top four. We're going to have one in final. So I guess, you know, they're the ones laughing. I don't know. Okay, he doesn't protect. That could be huge. That could be Just really big. Goes for the waterfall. As we say, as we were saying, went for the uh, the second dragon dance to get that speed boost to even outspeed that choice scarf Garchomp. We'll take a little bit of recoil thanks to Rufskin in a return and A Drive just going for another dragon dance here. Wow. No, that was his first. Wasn't that his first dragon? Yeah, dance? that was his first. But we're seeing. Um, oh my oh, God! With and plus one Watarium Z. Yes, and we we now got confirmation that this Garchomp on Viera's end is in fact like a pretty slow and bulky variant um, that I think he has also used at the international championships in London that he attended um, past December. So he seems to be really liking that type of Garchomp um, with Sword Dance, Rock Side, and um, and Earthquake as the only attacking moves. But now we do see that last Pokemon on Adrive's side. It is in fact the Muck. So you were calling that pretty perfectly. But now the question mm -hmm. is, of course, like. Does that Gyarados? Um, it should be enough to to KO the Garchomp, right? With the with the Z move. Definitely, but, but do you think Z move plus Waterfall will KO? Because if he if that Garchomp isn't max speed, it's got to have some bulk, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, it's it's really tough to call this one. Then of course something like I don't know. Um, even if he expects say the protect from Gyarados, he could go really wide and uh, I don't know like double up in the muck. 
Um, he also still has uh, the tectonic, tectonic Rage available to him, right? Mm -hmm. On the on the guard jump. Not to mention, he can go for a waterfall flinch, and Gyarados doesn't have huge physical defense. And if Gyarados is outspeeding a Garchomp, it has to be running a lot of speed, probably at least a jolly nature, a speed boosting nature, I should say, um, and and some investment as well, which means that maybe Adri doesn't have that much investment. And if that's the case, I think there's a chance that maybe water two plus two boosted by one stage of attack waterfalls. What if that KOs? I think there's a chance, right? It's already taken like thirty percent. Yeah, so both of them really taking the time here, thinking about what they could do. Um, if you want to go active and root for either of those guys, you can, by the way, now also join the game on Twitter, not only using the hashtag Geico Gaming, but also hashtag Underdrive if you're rooting for the underdog A Drive here, or hashtag Overshoma if um, Shade Vieira is the one you want to see in the finals. Again, guys, this is only the first game, and it's coming down to the very wire. Um, this oh. current could decide it all. Protect is coming out from, from Vieira's guard jump. So, um, he's probably expecting that Z move coming out from his opponent's Gyarados, but A Drive is protecting his own Makos. No waterfall. Yeah, nice prediction here on Vieras and really showing off why he is considered to be one of the very best in the world at this game. Um, the Hydro Vortex is coming out from, from A Drive's Gyarados, but if I had to guess, that is going into the protecting guard from. So, probably. Won't do too much damage here. Um, and it looks like Shade Vieira really coming through here, um, making the right play. Yep, it will be the guard jump. Let's see how much damage it still does. But um, yeah, Vieira definitely getting the the most out of this turn. Yeah, that was a that was an amazing turn for Vieira, and I think he might have actually pinned Shoma here, where. Um, with Gyarados at an inc increased stage of attack, well, maybe not, but I think that Gyarados is, uh, I'm sorry, I think A Drive's Gyarados is probably in range from Waterfall, and if it's not in range from Waterfall, it is in range of Waterfall plus Rough Skin. And so that would make it a one versus one against the boosted Gyarados for A Drive, and I think that's going to be a really tough position to come back from, but of course, this is Pokemon, anything can happen, and maybe that last deck was a high damage roll, and this next one will be a low one, so there's still a lot of variability at play here. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how this one shakes out. Yeah, so... Uh, also, do we expect do we expect Waterfall to knock out Garchomp here at this rate? No, but he has Ice Fang. He has Ice Fang. Oh right, he has Ice yeah. Fang. Yeah, so that's something you can go for. Knock out that Garchomp, and yeah, then we we would be coming down to the situation you mentioned before. However, then with everyone off the board, um, Gyarados's Earthquake would be like a single target, and that should also do a lot of damage. So yeah, um, I think I'd give I definitely give the advantage here um, to Viera, but yeah. Um, that Mux still having its its berry available um, could potentially tank one hit, maybe even two. Um, and hit back with that knockoff. So, yeah, that, the matchup between the Gyarados here, that is going to be really important. Uh, will Waterfall just knock out A Drive's Gyarados? Or does he go for. Okay, he goes for it. Double protect. Viera wow. is crazy. Well, let's see there. It might not matter um, since, yeah, that Waterfall, yep, yeah. it, it gets the KO either way. So, yeah, yeah. A Drive also knowing matter. that. Okay, he, he just, like. Um, added another chance for him, basically saying that, okay, like, either this waterfall knocks you out, and even if it doesn't knock you out, I still have a chance to get off the double protect. Um, it works out for him, and knockoff actually doing a sizable amount of damage, so I think, um, like, with another, with Poison Jab, yeah, he could've, he could've, uh, he could've pulled it back with his muck on its own, but now he knows, against both Garchomp and the Gyarados, um, yeah, he knows that there is nothing he can do here. Forfeits the game, and Shade Vieira will take the first game here in this best of five series. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, like what was really, really the, the kind of the deciding turn at the end of that game was where uh, where A Drive protected his muck and, and Z waterfall into yes. the Garchomp. And if he if he had Dragon Dance there, for example, I think mm -hmm. there's a chance that maybe well, we don't know how fast the Gyaradoses are in comparison to each other. But if he called that turn correctly, if he Dragon Dance, if he hadn't Z water, Z Waterium Z there. Um, I think he definitely could have won that. But we do have to men we do have to keep in mind that I think if that single target rock slide had hit onto A Drive's Gyarados yeah. from the neutral guard shop, I don't think it would have mattered because I think yeah. he would have been in waterfall range anyway. So lots of factors at play here. A Drive definitely, I feel like because A Drive has less experience, I feel like the as the information game continues, I actually think I favor his like I think I favor him gaining more from uh, mm -hmm. extended gameplay than Viera. But Viera is just such a scary player. I don't know. He like whenever I watch Viera play, I always feel like He's just so good. Like it's it's mm -hmm. it's 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 almost un un ungraspable for me to think about how yeah. good he actually is and how far ahead he's thinking. I don't know. He's such a terrifying player. Yeah, and um, even sometimes like coming in with with those plays, just making the right protects, going for he, he doesn't care. He just goes for the boosting moves when he knows he was down two to four Pokemon, right? Yeah. And he kept both of his Pokemon alive until the very end because he yes. knew how to set himself up. He knew. Um, that even if he lost a couple of Pokemon early on after setting up Tailwind, bringing both Garchom and Gyarados in at the same time, he could then utilize the fact that um, Garchomp's Earthquake and Rockslide like, are spread-type attacks that threaten two Pokemon on their on his opponent's end. 
Um, he used that time that he gained to set up Dragon Dance, and then he set up even another Dragon Dance, made sure that he outsped his opponent's Gyarados even after that was boosted, and then, yeah, was just able to take the game from there. So, um, really well played on uh, Vieira's end, but also A-Drive coming really, really close to taking a game of the 2015 World Champion. Um, but again, this is a best-of-five series, so um, it's not at all over yet, and he has a couple more shots at um, winning not only one, but maybe like all three games that he would need to advance into the finals against Cybertron. Absolutely, yeah. And I don't know, that was such an interesting match. And like the Hydro Pump from Feeny was also really, really interesting. Marcus, mm -hmm. I, I have to know right now, mm -hmm. is Vieira going to lead Balloon and Lele in game two? What do you think? What are the odds? Dude, if I, if I had to bet, I would probably say yes. I would say yes as well. Because um, his other favorite lead, like Le 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 doesn't seem too great to be no. too great here. Um, if we are on the topic of predictions, though, I do think that there is um, a, a potential for um, that maybe Adraf wants to go with his Arcanine. I know I agree. it doesn't look really strong against um, Gyarados and Garchomp, especially considering that both of them have um, those boosting options with Dragon Dance and um, with Sword Dance. But if he's able to get the um, to get it in early on, kind of like threaten the the Drift Limb and the Lele a little bit, and then like. Uh, like maintain it in the back for just one round of Intimidate, that could probably not be enough to say, set up his own Gyarados since if he gets off those double Intimidates, then Dragon Dance on its own um, is not enough to, to like um, counter those those recycled Intimidates. And then if he can set up his own Gyarados, then um, yeah, just imagine if he had say like one or two more Dragon Dances, he probably would have been able to take that last game. Yeah, it seems like whenever we watch Shoma play, his not with the exception of your set, with the other sets that we saw, it, mm -hmm. it seemed like it was kind of like early game, early game, early game, early game, damage, 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 damage. Get your sweepers into position, and then with the, like boost one of them, and then use the boosted sweeper to protect the other one. With the, so either Garchomp protecting the Gyarados as Gyarados Dragon Dances and Garchomp Earthquakes, or Gyarados in one situation actually earthquake while yeah, Garchomp Swords Dance. Exactly. So, yeah, I wanted to to mention that as well. Like that play on its own just. Just, I, I I remember how like you freaked out uh, about this because he he earthquake his own guard jump, but he, it was a safe play because he knew that um it would like damage or I mean it was a prediction but um it would um cover the options that he was expecting from his opponent damaging his own Pokemon that, but that didn't matter since he was boosted up afterwards and then. Um, the role switched a little bit since then. Garchomp is the one going for those earthquakes. Um, well, Gyarados can drag Gyarados exactly. can avoid them. Exactly. So, um, yeah, really incredible play actually coming out from um, from Viera here in that set. And the question, of course, is now, like, if you're Viera, um, you already asked me that, but what do you think? Do you think that there's anything he needs to change? Because he got, like, he got a, the Pokemon disadvantage, like, pretty early on. And now, if Dan was able to capitalize on that a little bit better and um, not overrun by that uh, Tailwind option, hmm... Like, maybe, maybe Viera wants to switch something up, or what do you think about that? Well, the thing is that his Pheromosa is physical and might be lacking Protect. And, like, I don't think Magnezo makes a lot of sense here, because Dan has Watarium Z Gyarados, but mostly he has Arcanine and Garchomp and Toga tomorrow, all of which are, like, pretty bad for Magnezone. So, um, I, I feel like he has to stick with the Pokemon he brought. He could switch up the order, but because Dan has two Intimidate Pokemon, uh, or Intimidate Pokemon with Intimidate on his mm -hmm. side of the field, I feel like... I feel like if you're Viera, I actually feel like you don't really have a choice. Like I feel like you have to bring the same leads because yeah. they're they're your only special attackers that you can really want to bring to the matchup. And but we don't know the Magnezone set. It could be something cool, but um, if it's if it's not anything like really really useful here, I feel like you have to bring the same four. And actually, what I think is about like part of what's really scary about Viera's team is like he has the options sometimes of bringing back his Lele when the opponent has Feeny on the field, and then bringing it back in and Specs boosted Psychic just hits so incredibly hard. Um, like, it's, like, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I think that Dan, uh, Shoma definitely got some some unfortunate some unfortunate things that game. Um, but so did Dan. So, I don't know. I'm really interested. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. Who could have predicted here, this? Here we are. Second game of this best of five series between Adrive and Viera. Uh, make sure to show your support in chat or on Twitter um, using the respective hashtags. And we are seeing the target of Maru. I'm so happy that um, Adrive decides to to pull that out here, going with yeah. Maru and Tapu Fini. So um, he should be able to get off some, say, um, fake out on the Tapu Lele and then some some strong attacks right away. So what's cool about this situation is that um, that Drift Blim has Tailwind, Shadow Ball, Rain Dance, and Will-O-Wisp. And I think what's cool with Togo Tomorrow here is not only does it threaten uh, Drift Blim with Sting Zap, but it also has Encore. And locking Drifflum into a move like Tailwind can be really, really beneficial for A-Drive. So um, we do now have one Pokemon on the field with with, with a protecting move. Uh, A-Drive has access to Fake Out. He has access to a really strong, powerful Water-type attack. And I don't know. I think this position is, is pretty good for A-Drive. But mm -hmm. 
Um, Token Noir definitely is, it's it's threatened by the Garchomp in the back and the Gyarados in the back, since, uh, yep. if he has those, because they both have Earthquake. So as long as he's the balloon, he'll be okay. But exactly. I'm interested to see whether or not Vera sets up Tailwind now, or maybe if he waits for a turn and goes for Shadow Ball. Um, yeah, that's, the fake out. that's oh. actually something that, he, that I was also like, I'm um, pretty impressed with like how well he managed to to use those tailwind turns in the game that I played against him. He always delayed it, setting it up. Exactly, and just waited for the very right moment. But if, oh well, going for the zing zap here, actually doing a decent chunk of damage. So the now watch. if Tapu Fini is able to get that KO on the drift limb, he would be able to deny Trick Room all around. Ah, uh, it'll be close. This, this, is this is choice makes boosted, but Psychic Seed on the drift limb, and oh it is enough for the God. knockout. Wow. Getting the accuracy drop on Tabulele in the process as well. And now uh, he denied that Trick Room. Um, I think Driftblim just felt a little too safe there in this situation. Um, staring down at Togunomaru and Tapu Fini. I mean, what is going to happen? He had the Psychic Seed. Um, again, he was probably expecting that Fake Out to come his way and didn't want to be um, encored into Tailwind. So, fantastic play here by A Drive, getting the first knockout of this game here. Yeah, and what I think is really interesting there is that when I saw Shadow Ball come out into that type of Fini, I thought he might have gone for a Moonblast, you know, maybe try to double into it to try and pick up a KO. Um, but instead he goes for a Dazzling Gleam, which had no chance of KOing. So I guess he was just trying to get some damage off, maybe pop the Air Balloon um, and go from there. But this game isn't, this game isn't like, un irrecoverable, but I do think that like denying Tail in there is actually really important. Because yeah. now, Adria probably, if, if Adria brought that Garchomp that has his Choice Scarf in the back, then uh, Shoma will need two Dragon Dances initially to outspeed it, and that's going to be kind of tough to get um, mm -hmm. based on how A-Drive is playing. So, yeah, Over. really, really, yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, so d I really, like, at first I was a little bit surprised with the choice of Togodomaru, um, thinking whether he thought that that was good against the, the Gyarados potentially, but we have already seen that Earthquake being a thing there. But using it to just take down the Drift Limb in the first turn was actually super clever. Yeah. However, uh, we're seeing the Garchomp come out from, from Viera, and even without Tailwind, it should be um, at least faster than the Tapu Fini. On his opponents, and so now, um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Do you go for just Rock Slide and Dazzling Gleam to knock out the Tabu Fini, since you know it is choice locked? Um, because um, it'll be hard making a pointer to Earthquake or your own Tabu Lele. And if he switched into his own Gyarados, then um, that opens opportunities for for Togedomaru to go for maybe a Zing Zap in that slot, um, or the the Tabu Fini just surviving that hit all around with yes, say something like the Gyarados coming in and helping it out with its intimidated ability. Marcus, we forgot about a very crucial piece of information. Uh, a drives Gyarados has Ice Fang and it outspeeds. Um, it outspeeds. Uh, oh my gosh, that oh, that was a that's a critical hit. Yeah. Yeah. So if Dazzling Gleam connects on the Gyarados, it does. Oh my gosh, that was that was a really well like super well played by Dan, but unfortunately, uh -huh. did, like Rock Slide crit and Dazzling Gleam connecting literally turned that game around. Like that was that was a huge mm. turn for Shoma and the fact that the Gyarados outspeeds Guard Jump and can Ice Fang is huge, right? Like it puts on so much pressure. Can Watarium Z. I don't know, that was a huge I turn. Think, I think he got a little bit too excited there, um, yeah. because I'm not really sure what the Togunomaru could have done in the for the rest of the battle. So maybe it could have been like a little bit more, like a little bit wiser to just like sack that off. Um, get let, let him take the Togunomaru because he knows that he had the Gyarados in the back waiting to intimidate that Garchomp, which as you said, was faster, could go for the Ice Fang. Um, however, yeah, he wanted to like, Get that in as soon as possible. Get up there, intimidate. Um, yeah, was a little bit punished there by being a little over eager um, with that critical hit. So now, um, yeah, the tides have turned again. Now it looks like Viera is the one with with a like pretty pretty good position here. Yeah, and like I, I think what Dan was expecting there was the earthquake to come into um, into the field. Um, maybe a switch out into Gyarados and to go for an earthquake. And in that situation, it would have been a a pretty nice position for him, um, you know, making Tapafini survive the earthquake, launching a muddy water, getting his Gyarados in for free. Um, but yeah, and there is the Gyarados. But oh, his fingers crossing. He wants to know. He zings at that slot. I would bet anything. No. What if he rocks slide? This is going to be big. Intimidate lowering both these physical attackers. Garchomp goes for a rock slide. Dan knows his wind condition. He's saying, please, Garchomp, please flinch, please flinch, Garchomp. Let's see but what then... happens. But how is he going to get rid of uh, the guard jump on his opponent's end? It outsped a guard jump! Togunomaru just outsped a guard jump and should- Oh my god! If he- Wait, Marcus, if he flinches, he could lose. Oh wait, no, how is he going to get rid of guard jump? Oh, yeah. Oh, but it's exciting anyway! We don't even okay. care! Maybe he has a plan! <laughs> Maybe he has a he gets, plan! He gets that flinch, yeah. Okay, but I think- <laughs> I think that is actually a very crucial piece of information. Okay, Togunomaru, because- Okay, so first game, um, he got beaten back by that Gyarados plus Garchomp combination, you know? Mm -hmm. You know what would totally beat that? Togodomaru and Gyarados. Yeah. Because he has his Ice Fang for the for the Garchomp and Zing Zap for that Gyarados. So maybe, I think, Togodomaru is actually something that he wants to bring here in this matchup. Marcus, yeah. and Togodomaru has 
encore. So if Guard Jump yeah. tries to protect itself from any moves, he can encore it into it. Exactly. So yeah, I think Tokyo Tomorrow, um, while there is, I'm not sure if there's still like a decent chance for Dan to win this game. I do think that with the information of like the speed tiers and what the Tokyo Tomorrow can do in this matchup, um, it still looks like, um, yeah, that could be something to, to focus on in the, in the next couple of games. And uh, he came so close here to win and I think he won't like make that mistake of switching in the, the Gyarados um, too early, like in the in the third or potentially a later game. You know, he's down 0-2, but like that's what I'm saying. I feel like he's improving. Like I feel like he, he downloaded Aaron's technology and he's like he's like you know he's he's bringing it back. Um, that's less than I thought. Oh, but Moonblast coming out. Shoma's so smart, dude. Shoma, Shoma recognizing um, what he needs to do to win here. But yeah. yeah. I don't know. I yeah, feel like Dan did, didn't. Yeah, he did. Like Dan, just um, without the Gyarados, without the Tapu Fini, just didn't have what it took to um, do any damage to his opponent's guard jump whatsoever. Basically, um, still trying to go for the flinches here, of course. But um, yeah, eventually it will look like um, Shoma is going to take the second game as well. So he'll be up two and zero. And yeah, now the 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 crazy part begins. You know, because yes. we are having here at the. Um, Pokemon Invitational brought to you by Geico Gaming. Um, we will be actually using best of five to determine who will advance into the finals against Cybertron. Um, yes. So, yeah, he has just a couple more chances here. So he he used two games. The first one, I gotta say, um, he was in a he was he was up four to two, right? Um, but then Vieira just like showing that he had probably like calculated and expected all of that just all along. He knew that he needed Gar Gyarados and Garchomp next to each other, and then he could take the game. Second game. Um, Huge turn one for A Drive. He gets rid of the Drift Limb right away, uh, denies his opponent to set up the Tailwind, um, and was looking to be in a super strong position. Then that critical hit happened on the switch in. But yeah, once again, if that crit didn't happen, or if Dan just didn't switch in the Gyarados and maybe um, sacked off something else, I do think that he was in a like pretty fantastic position to potentially take that game. And now um, he's come so close twice. Uh, do you think that in the first game, um, he will be able to overcome the odds here and take out Vieira? I feel like it's only a matter of time. Like both games, he like I feel like he was in a good position, but maybe just like the lack of experience with like, with, like playing VGC, like, like that, I feel like that's all that held him back. Like he had the tools he needed, he made the plays he needed. But I think that's why like Shoma is so scary is that he's kind of covering for even if Dan makes the right like the right plays in the short term, Shoma has the long term down. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, I feel like he 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 just got a little over eager. He kind of saw the he didn't think about the the game as in like a, a broad enough sense, right? Where he was thinking like, okay, Gyarados can switch in here pretty free. He probably earthquakes, but he didn't think about like even if Feeny goes down, I can if I if I get Gyarados and Togo tomorrow in at the same time. I can just set up really easily. So yep. I really, like, Dan could have taken both of those games, and I would not be surprised at all to see him take the third game. And he's adapting. That's the thing. Yep. Like, that game to adapt adaptation was so good. You know, like, I feel like Togo tomorrow is such a good call here. And maybe Arcanine is a place as well, though. That game, I feel like Arcanine wouldn't have been as good, maybe. Um, yeah, I think I think yeah he, he the, the Pokemon he chose here were were pretty much um, spot on uh, with it, with that target Maru threatening the Zing Zaps not only outspeeding the Tabu Lele but also the Gyarados so mm -hmm. uh, really also coming in clutch damaging the Drift Limb so I think for the third game like if it should come down to a similar situation with Drift Limb Lele against um, something. Mm -hmm. Um, with Togedo Maru on, on Dan's end. I do think that maybe Viera would then just go ahead and set up Tailwind straight away, not wanting to, to have anything to like deal with potentially being knocked out because he now saw that, okay, wow, all my Pokemon are actually slower than my opponents. I really need that Tailwind. And thanks to the unburden ability on Drift Blim, um, upon activating its Psychic Seed, it, it outspeeds everything. So you, he, he could just go for the Tailwind right away and there is no way that Dan could stop that. So I really do think that... Um, yeah, the, the question of the ongoing um, or the upcoming games will be like, does ha does Dan have the resources to outstall the Tailwind and will uh, will Viera like keep on going with the same strategy or does he like want to switch things up maybe? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think like Togemaru being so fast is such a huge factor in this game because being able to outspeed Garchomp and go for an Encore, being able to outspeed Gyarados and go for a Zing Zap, being able to be able to outspeed Tapu Lele and going for a Zing Zap and flinching mm -hmm. it like this, or maybe picking up a KO at his low HP. So many factors are at play here, and I, I, I didn't expect Togemaru to be so good, but I feel like I feel like Dan's use of Togemaru is really brilliant, and I actually really agree with the Air Balloon play as well. So yes, um, yeah, this is this is an interesting set, guys. If you think that Dan is going to win. Please press one. Please press one if you believe in, in underdrive. I need to know right now. Press one for Dan. Um, yes, and we should be getting back into the game soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we should be we should be going into the game soon. And um, once again, I do think 
um, that the Pokemon that Dan chose here, the Togodomaru, the Garchomp, the Gyarados, and the Tabufini, like those four are probably the ones that he wants to have here on the set. And same thing for Viera. He, he knew all along what he wanted to go for with the Lele, the Drifblim, um, the Gyarados, and the Garchomp. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Do both of them just stick to the guns? Will they use the same plan again in this third game of this best of five set? Um, they are already setting up, and we will jump into the game really, really soon. Your prediction, putting you on the spot, what do you think? Who's going to lead off with... Listen, I know I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy, but I have a feeling in my gut that Viera might lead with Drifblim Tapu Lele. Um, and actually, before oh, wow. we jump into it, one thing I know, it's very it's very unorthodox, but I do want to say one thing, is that Dan has been using both games turn one. He's led Tapu Fini, and he's locked himself into a water move, and both of those moves are inaccurate. So it's mm -hmm. paid off for Dan so far, but I feel like if Dan does this enough, he might eventually have a situation where one of his powerful water moves misses. <gasps> oh my god! Oh, Who could wow. have predicted this? He goes with Drifflin Tapu Lele as Dan again adapts and leads Buck Tapu Fini. That's very interesting. Yeah, do you think um, if you have Yera, like you just won two games, right? So yeah. why switch things up? You could you could even lose two games and still have a shot at winning. Yeah. Um, realizing that hey, like, why should I change something? You you first of all you have to show me a reason of why I should not just go with the same plan again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, and what's interesting here is that he's brought Muck, Marcus, which means that he has to he can only have two of Gyarados, Garchomp, and Toga tomorrow, and we mm. thought he would have all three. So. Yes. I actually, I think I like the Muck play here. Um, I think he probably has Gyarados in the back, so I think he has to choose between their Toga tomorrow or Garchomp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Dan really like being probably also like really anticipating this specific lead mm -hmm. because you wouldn't want to lead Muck Tapu Fini against something like, I don't know, Garchomp and whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> Dan says comeback, <laughs> question mark? He's praying, he's praying for the comeback here. Um, also calling back his muck here, bringing out the Gyarados. Ooh, I have a bad feeling about this one, Marcus. I have a bad feeling about this one. Why? I think that Shoma probably went for either Tailwind or, I don't know, Shadow Ball and, and something else into the... No, it goes for Tailwind, but I think this is probably going to be Dazzling Gleam or, or Moonblast. Yeah. I think, I think um, Adrive probably anticipated mm -hmm. a switch here into, say, the Guard Jump here to, to take care of the muck. Um, instead, though, we're just yeah. seeing Dazzling Gleam, and yet there is that Moonblast going straight into the Tapu Lele. And yeah, once again, um, no Shoma back. realizing that he just needs to set up the Tailwind turn one to just guarantee that he has that speed advantage, at least for the first couple of turns. And it looks like here, the first Dazzling Gleam really doing a lot of damage. And um, Drifblim, outspeeding the entire field, can now go for a, a Shadow Wall um, that we know is so powerful. Um, for, I'm not sure if it would be enough, but maybe like even Shadow Balling the Tabu Fini and going for another Dazzling Gleam could be enough to, to get the KO there. Um, Shadow Balling into the Gyarados would then activate the Citrus Berry, but yeah, even... No, even it's Watarian Z, you've got your Gyarados Oh, confused. right, right, sorry, yeah. that's that's the other guy's Gyarados, right. So, yeah. th so that would also <laughs> be enough for a knockout here. So, um, yeah, Viera really putting himself here in a position where he can just, like, take the first KO, and that can be so important here. Here's here's why I think this is so scary. The way that... Oh, let's see who he Shadow Balled first. Oh, is it Mocker Gyarados? It's Gyarados. Oh, he, that's not good for just, a drive. He's just so good. He's really good. So here's... Here's why this is so scary. The way that Shoma's playing is he doesn't care if his Lele goes down. He's literally using it just to do early game damage so that he can put the poke so he can, he's like, he doesn't want to KO Pokemon. He wants to put them in range. He wants to put them in range to so that his sweepers, so he can get into the position where his sweepers can KO everything while the other one boosts. That's so incredibly clever and like, I don't know. Let's see what his last mon is here. Tapu Fini, oh damn, not like this. Not like this. Tapu Fini being unable to protect himself from a Dazzling Gleam means that Shoma's gonna be doing so much damage this turn. Yeah, and it looks like um, Shoma eventually, it looks like A-Drive's road is coming to a close here. Um, yeah, Shade Viera, the final boss from Japan here in, in the semi-final, standing in his way with his Drifflim Tapu Lele combination. Um, really like just setting up the Tailwind straight away and then um, yeah, calling that. And also I, I think hmm, maybe maybe um, A-Drive was to be like a little bit too trying to um, predict a little bit too much. Um, that first turn going for the Moonblast yeah. there and calling back the Muck. Um, I do think that once again, Viera still hadn't seen any clear reason of why he needed to to, ch to significantly change anything up with his strategy. Actually though, Tabu Fini is able to hang in here after the Dazzling Gleam, so he will be able to get off some uh, attacks here. Um, Muddy Water, ah, uh, like I said, it was only a matter of time until I missed. Yep. Oh, poor Dan. That's, he cannot be happy about that. Lele is probably going down. Yep, Lele is going down. So this is a knockoff. Um, and it is, so maybe, actually, let's see how much this does, but with Muddy Water, there's a chance. 
I actually think that would have KO'd with Muddy Water, so that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, I think, at least. It's hard to tell if it actually was yeah. unfortunate. I mean, yeah. There's, yeah, there's still the item on, I mean, the, the second, second seed. But, yeah. Anyway, even if that KO'd, then you gotta believe that there is Garchomp and Gyarados Garrett waiting is. in the back for, yeah. for Viera. Um, still with that speed advantage, now Gar Garchomp in. Um, Tabu Fini will go down here, and then Muck will also not have a very pleasant time here against that Garchomp on, on Viera's end. Yeah, unfortunately. So a really, a really incredible showing by a Dry. That's not over yet. This game isn't over yet, but you have to think with Tailwind up, with Garchomp in, with two Pokemon that are either in, an, excuse me, Earthquake range or weak to Earthquake. It's, it's looking pretty bad for, um, for our underdog here. But maybe he can bring it back. But Viera, I don't know. He's just such a clever player. I feel like he already knows what he has to do to win this game. Mhm. Mm yeah, definitely. So both players thinking about what they could do here. Um, a Drive decides to protect his Muck since. Um, yeah, like there is no reason for him to just try and go ahead for any attacks here. Um, we have we seen his last Pokemon? No, I, we haven't. I so don't think so. Yeah. So what if Gyarados? And, okay, okay, no, he's already KO'd Gyarados. What if right, right, Garchomp? Sorry. No, you're fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Adrock does the Z dance. He's punching the ground. He probably is not too happy <laughs> about the way this has gone. <laughs> yeah, still like, at least calling that uh, Tectonic Rage coming out here into his protecting Muck, but even that. Um, you know, that's actually a pretty interesting call, because usually that does not activate the berry, and then afterwards you can go for Earthquake to pick up the KO. But since uh, Viera's Scarchum looks to be like so offensive and... Um, um, the berry was already activated, actually. He, he doubled down yeah. on Gleam activating it. Yeah, yeah, but but just like um, based on the interaction, because usually mm. if you're going to see the, the Z animation going off into a muck, um, then that will activate, or will not activate, excuse me, that berry. But yeah, we already saw that um, not being a factor any longer, and now yeah, it, it all comes down to, to A-Drive's own Garchomp, but um, yeah, with, with Driftblim outspeeding it and yeah, Garchomp still being a thing on his opponent's team, uh, it'll it'll be uh, a tough way to, to still come up on top here. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, still an incredible, incredible tournament performance by, um, by A-Drive. And actually, what is Vieira doing? He oh, sorry. I thought Tailwind yeah. was still up. That's my bad. No, he's my just bad. he's just saying like, okay, my my drift blim outspeeds your Garchomp thanks to to the unburden ability yeah. anyway, and um, he's going for some more rock slides here, and that might KO the drift blim as yeah. it does. So we will get to see Viera's last Pokemon here, but yeah, just um, not really wanting to to take any risks, setting up Tailwind again, and um, yeah, it looks like uh, Viera um, will. Join Cybertron in the finals here as wow. this should be Gyarados. There it is. So he is pretty free to go for an earthquake to do damage to the muck and knock it out, and then also um, waterfall, the probably. waterfall to get rid of the Garchomp. Yeah. And wow, yeah, really, really well played. Switch <laughs> drive. Oh, I'm sorry, A drive, but I think Tailwind means. I think that's why he went protect Tailwind. So, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't think he has too many too many options to, yeah. to go for those flinches, but still. Um, he is, he's, um, we, we shouldn't forget that he's um, shown us such incredible play here over the course of this tournament. Um, beating you, beating Cybertron, two very, very accomplished players in the VGC scene. Yeah. Uh, he was the underdog going into this tournament. He was the underdog going into the series. And it looks like Viera, Jade Viera, <laughs> um, Shoma Homa, Honami, excuse me, from Japan, will be the one advancing here into the finals. He tried, he did his best, and I'm sure that he's happy for what he was able to do in this tournament. And um, so we we will have our finals matchup um, that we can talk about just in a second. But once again, I want to stress how impressive um, yes. Adrock's performance in this tournament really was. Yes, I, I cannot. I mean, I played against myself and I was really blown away. And I think he really, he did an amazing job proving everyone wrong who was doubting him. He says, love you guys. Oh, that's so amazing. Yeah, shout out to everyone who came here for, for A-Drive and shout out to him for being such a good sport. And really, really like, just having an incredible attitude. You know, it's so hard when people are negative about you online and like saying like mean stuff about you, but he never let it get him down. He came here, he made a statement and he won a hundred bucks, you know, and that's really impressive. <laughs> You know, yeah, he's, he's you, already won five hundred dollars. Yeah, is he, is he going to get the? the, the I want to ask him if, <laughs> if, he, if we do a loser interview. Let's ask him if, if he's going to get a life size cut out of me. Um, I also I would like just to say as well that I really like the picture they use for Shoma is like, it's like him with the thumbs up. I feel like for those of you who have met Shoma, you know he's like he's really really funny and he's really he's like a, he's like. He's like a troll, not in a bad way, but he he, like, he really likes to mess with people, and I really yeah, I think that. Yeah, yeah go he's, ahead. He's super, he's super funny. Yeah, really, really great guy. And I'm looking forward to, to meeting him uh, next month. But um, yeah, so um, in that set, like, 
if we if we're just thinking about like was there anything that maybe a drive could have done a little differently we were talking about maybe um focusing on the Gyarados a little harder could be something um but even then it would have been super tough to overcome to go overcome Vieira, right because yeah he's been showing such consistent play um yeah like he basically always gets to uh got to set up in those situations with his sweepers whether it's in tailwind or not and yeah i think maybe after this tournament like that's that could be like a new archetype coming out of this since yeah i haven't really seen like a team that like his team like this and it's been it's been really uh working for him here one of the cool things about having players from outside vgc come into vgc is they don't have any of the like they don't have any like the structures of teams already in their minds and sometimes that means that maybe they build teams that aren't as good but i think with adra with in a drive's case he showed that he built a team that was like really not standard at all but he did really well with it and i think part of what's cool about this invitational is seeing the different team archetypes and maybe having him inspire players to build teams using mm -hmm. not only their favorites but pokemon like togo tomorrow um and other like really cool choices like hydro pump specs Fini. so um we are going to we are going to be interviewing a drive shortly show unfortunately cannot be inter interviewed but we will be interviewing a drive about his tournament performance so we're going to throw to a short break guys um and we will be back soon with an interview with a drive Yo, what's going on, guys? We are back here with the Onok in Pokemon Invitational brought to you by Geico Gaming. We're joined here for the last time by Dan the Man A Drive. Dude. <laughs> what's uh, up, what, man? How are we doing? <laughs> uh, what a way to go down against one of the, the very best players in the world, um, a, a former world champion, a national champion from Japan. Uh, first of all, have you ever played against any from one from Japan before, or was that also first time? There? No, that was that was definitely the first. In fact, it was so much so the first that I actually messed up the rule set in game <laughs> one. So, uh, of course, my noobness here, I didn't realize that uh, you have to download the VGC rule set apparently. So I apologize for the little mishap there. You can blame A Drive on that one, but yeah. uh, no, honestly, that was a ton of fun, man. Honestly, all the props of the world to Shoma there. Great game. His team is just phenomenal. I, I really, I heard you guys just saying it could be a new like archetype with yes. that Drifflim, and and uh, you know it's funny. I played a bunch of Drifflims on Showdown, and I did not like my Drifflim matchup, but <laughs> that's what ends up doing me. And but honestly, I'm not disappointed at all, man. I had a blast. That game was so fun. Regardless, I was smiling and laughing the whole time. That's what Pokemon should be about, in my opinion. That is that is re like remarkably well said, and um, <laughs> I'd like just like to commend you on your attitude and like having you here was such like it was such a pleasure. Um, oh, thanks, man. So, with so, I, I want to ask, with such huge success in the VGC tournament this weekend, do you do you see yourself continuing to play VGC? I know you're going to the St. Louis Regional Championships, but like, do you think this is something you'd want to continue doing? Yeah, hundred percent, man. Like, uh, my initial plan was to do the St. Louis Regional. This wasn't part of my initial plan; it just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. uh, this tournament gave me a ton of confidence in going into St. Louis, so I'm really excited about that. A little bit of pressure too. There was no yeah, pressure going to St. Louis. Now there's a wee bit, but uh, it's all good, man. I'm, I'm expecting to uh, to have some fun there and, and just kind of just just smile and just play the game and, and the game I love. And and uh, you know, I think I'm going to continue VGC after this, though, for sure. That's awesome. Well, you I mean obviously you're an amazing player, and it's like it's been such a, it's like been really awesome to see how um, how your like single battle skills and just your battling skills in general translate. So um, I do have to ask. Okay, just for my own personal <laughs> personal uh, information, I you did win a hundred dollars this weekend. And I remember you saying that if you won the tournament, you'd use a hundred dollars <laughs> to spend uh, to get a, a life size cutout of myself. Will yeah, you be so using <laughs> Will you be using the hundred dollars you won to be buying a life size cutout of me? No, so, so the wings. original the original plan was uh, I said if I won the five hundred I would get a hundred dollars worth of buffalo chicken a hundred dollars towards a life size cardboard cut out of wolf for my office here and then uh, I get three hundred dollars for Nintendo Switch but I did win a hundred dollars and I'm actually going to be donating that to charity uh, on behalf of Alex Blusa and his father for uh, colon cancer research so um, I'm I'm really excited about that and I'm wishing Mr. Blusa all the best of course in his recovery and everything like that. So big props to Alex and his father. And, and that's what I'm going to be doing with the hundred bucks. That's, that's so incredible of you. Like, yes. Wow. I don't have, any, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> yeah. We have very, very noble of you. Um, thanks for sharing that as well. And also at that point, also shout outs to, to Justin and Alex who are a little bit sick and probably watching now get, get, get well guys. Yeah. We love so, you guys. Just, just one more question about like, uh, the whole, the, um, sorry, your whole games against Viera. And before we wrap this thing up, um, like, did you feel that, um, I mean, your team, you didn't actually have like a, a strong way of like to, to um, set up speed control. Um, you, have, you have the Choice Scarf on your Garchomp and you have Dragon Dance as an option on Gyarados. But I'm seeing that um, Viera was opting to use like a very slow Gyarados as well as a very slow Garchomp and then use Tailwind to make up for that. Um, do you think that like for, for your upcoming um, tournaments or teams that you want to build, is that something you want to like keep in mind a little more or also exploit a little bit with the Tailwind or... 
um, how to do feel because I know that um, in, in singles battles, like speed control is usually not something you really care about at all. But in mm -hmm. doubles, it just happens to be like a, a really, really big thing, you know? Yeah, um, well, when it comes to that, like, I think in terms of the variation of the team that I'm bringing right now, I do realize that that's an issue. I've had uh, a couple different variations with Ninetales on mm -hmm. it, carrying Icy Wind to kind of help with that mm -hmm. option. And uh, the original variant of this team actually, for a long time, carried Nuzzle instead of Zing Zap on Togedomaru. Uh, but I took that off, obviously, because I added yep. Top Fini, and I didn't want to kind of have a conflicting uh, sets there. So uh, speed control, definitely important there. It was ultimately what really gave... Uh, you know, uh, Shoma a great advantage going into that match, and he played incredibly well. He stuck with that Drift Limb Lele, and I knew it was coming, man. I knew what he was bringing every game. I knew that that was the four, but uh, yeah. it, it just wasn't able to uh, to get the the, the, the rolls and the RNG in my favor, and, and he really, honestly, that strategy was just so great, and my team just wasn't ready to handle it, and he outplayed me. He's a great competitor, and I'm excited to see this uh, finals match, man. Aaron Cybertron Zhang here taking on uh, Shoma. That's looking to be a pretty epic finals, man. Yeah, yeah it should be. Go it should be amazing. Sorry. Um, do you have any any further questions, Wolf? No, I, I think that's it for me. i just like to say, guys, um, make sure to check out pokemon.onog.gg to enter the giveaway, um, which is giveaway is only for US and Canadian uh, residents. Guy goes only in the US, but guys, please check them out. Um, it's it's like it's only thanks to them that we're here. And we'd like to say again, thank you to Geico Gaming and thank you to One Nation of Gamers, Onog. Like this has been yeah. an incredible opportunity and yeah. we're all and so grateful. Yeah. yeah. Thanks to all the sponsors. And before we're throwing this to a final break, before we go back with the grand finals, I wanted to give Adrive a last opportunity uh, to have a word for his fans who I'm sure are still like really interested in what you have to say <laughs> to us right now. Thanks, man. So uh, first and foremost, thank you to everyone who supported this tournament in the first place, not just my audience, of course, but big shouts to the A-Drive Army. You guys are amazing. You guys already know that. But uh, a bigger shout out to the VGC community. Uh, you know, there was some, I, I don't want to talk about the negativity going into the event, but there's been so many amazing people who have extended their reach to me and been so generous. And just, I can't even name all the names of people who reached out to me for this tournament to assist and, and really give me that tutoring and mentoring. And I think there's just some great people in this community. And I think if you have the great people, you have the gameplay that's awesome there, there's just some really great opportunities here moving forward for vgc for onog and for geico gaming and i'm really optimistic for what's to come i'm excited and let's check out this finals match here momentarily guys it's gonna be pretty sweet cool uh before we're kicking into the break what's your prediction for that final match yeah i gotta give it to aaron i'm rooting for aaron, aaron. I, okay. i'm a fan of both i mean uh but uh i gotta go for aaron he was playing uh he was playing out of his mind uh yes, against definitely. Inosh. so uh you know I, I wish them both luck, and it should be entertaining. Let's just hope we get a we just let's just hope we get a game five. How about that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be very. Cool. How about we get, we go for a game five? That'll be good. Yes. Cool. So um, thanks a lot to Adra for joining us here once again for the last time. Um, again, incredible showing, but I, we, we we've talked about that enough, I think, at this point because now um, the stage is set for uh, the two competitors that will do get out in the finals. Before that, though, we will just go to into a very short break so don't go anywhere and we will be back with the grand finals of the onog invitational right after this 